Joining us on the news line today, Case Learning founder, longtime Buffett watcher Whitney Tilson is with us. Also founded and ran Case Capital Management for nearly two decades and has been to the last 21 Berkshire annual shareholder meetings. Uh, Whitney, it's hard to, hard to do Buffett and not uh, follow it with you, so thanks for the time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. It sounds like you think the buyback really is the lead here. Yes, um, we've been, uh, we and other shareholders have been sort of urging uh, Buffett and Munger to not be locked into a you know, 1.2 times book value for share repurchases, but instead to give two of the world's greatest investors flexibility to use their judgment as to when uh, it's attractive to buy Berkshire stock versus the many other things they could do with their enormous cash hoard and tremendous cash flows. So we were delighted to see um, that the announcement a few months ago that there was going to they were going to give themselves some more flexibility there. Um, and then in today, I believe it is the first time that Buffett has ever disclosed that they have bought back any shares um, uh, above 1.2 times book. And I think this is a, a major material new piece of information because it means that he's been buying back stock at uh, 1.4 times book at least, which is where the stock has traded since then. Uh, so I think there's a new soft floor in Berkshire stock north of $300,000 a share. So I was delighted to see that. Uh, and Whitney, in, in terms of that cash pile that he's sitting on, $120 billion, I realize he's starting to buy back uh, some shares here of the company, and that is, is big news. But how would you envision some of that money being put to use right now? And in light of his comments about stock valuations and other asset valuations right now, do you, do you think it's sitting in a pile, for the most part, makes the most sense? Yeah, I, I honestly think, I mean, keep in mind, it's not just the $120 billion of cash, but it's the couple billion dollars a month that's pouring into Omaha from all of Berkshire's, you know, extremely profitable uh, operating businesses, as well as investment income and dividends. So it's a high-class problem, and Buffett and Munger acknowledged in their annual letter, and he acknowledged again today, that valuations are not super attractive. You know, he's buying back a little bit of Berkshire stock. He's buying a little more Apple stock. He disclosed not seeing much in the consumer goods uh, companies, uh, which I agree with. Uh, but he's he's certainly hoping to bag some more elephants before all is said and done. But it's a tough environment out there. But I think he said in the annual letter, he said, you know, human nature hasn't changed. There will be panics out there again. And when it rains gold, we will be out there with very big wash tubs to uh, harvest that gold. Yes, uh, and you've heard enough of his um, his commentary over the years. We'd need to know when his uh, <laughs> when his um, his juices are really flowing, and, and he wants to put that money to work. You mentioned the comments on on packaged goods. He talked about keeping his airline holdings under a certain cap. He talked about pricing pressures uh, in uh, in paint and building materials. You put all that together. It is, is it a surprise that the market, to the degree it's reacting to him, has reacted the way it has? You know, I don't think he, um, you know, dropped any bombs today in terms of these are views. Uh, you know, he loves Apple and he's having tr uh, trouble putting money to work and he likes the airlines, but he's capped out. All of that is old news. The real news, the stock that really should be moving on the, on the news today, in my opinion, is Berkshire Hathaway itself uh, because, you um, you know, it's a, the stock isn't super cheap. We estimate it's about a 90 cent dollar today. We peg intrinsic value a little north of $350,000 per A share. Um, so, you know, call it up 10% from here. But um, there, w there was an old floor at 1.2 times book, but that's way down at $261,000 per A share. The fact that today he disclosed that he was buying back shares north of $300,000 a share, I think has created a, a much more attractive risk-reward dynamic here where the downside is no longer the floor is no longer $261,000 a share. It's probably three oh five or so, which is my estimate yeah. about where he was probably buying it. So now you've got one of the most attractive companies in the world growing its intrinsic value, call it at 8 or 10% a year. That's 10% undervalued, not screaming cheap, but now there's a new floor in here. Um, it's not a hard floor, but I think there's the, what Buffett disclosed today is a very strong indication that he could be buying back tens of billions of dollars worth of stock and really put in a floor if there's much weakness in the stock from here. So that's, that's major news. So in light of the conversation, I see it's currently Berkshire shares currently a third of your friend's family portfolio. Would you be a buyer here? Are you buying more? 
Well, as new, um, you know, to the extent some more friends and family uh, give me some more capital to invest alongside my own capital, um, I'm, I'm going to be doing some separately managed accounts uh, for mostly friends and family at this point. Um, I, still, I still love the money management game, even though I'm no longer running a hedge fund. Um, as of last when I closed my, my mine after 20 years last uh, September, um, and so I'll definitely be buying Berkshire in, in that. Um, I, I'm not going to make Berkshire more than a, a one-third of my, you know, of my stock portfolio. I'm still sitting on a bunch of cash as well. I'm, I'm a little like Buffett. Um, it's not a super attractive environment. So it's not a third of my entire net worth. It's a third of the, the piece I've got allocated to stocks. So I'd definitely be continuing to buy Berkshire with new capital to keep it as a third of my stock portfolio. Uh, but I think that's plenty big right now, and, and but I'd make it bigger <laughs> if it got much cheaper. Hmm. Finally, Whitney, it sounds like you think uh, he's going to be running this for the next five years. Well, I've you know I said that a few years ago because you know when someone starts you know in their mid to late eighties, um, you know uh, I, I estimated I said uh, two or three years ago. Um, I looked at actuarial tables and then my observations of uh, Buffett's physical and mental health, and I said I think there's an 80% chance that he's still running Berkshire in five years. Uh, you know, we're now probably three years into that, but from what I've seen at the Berkshire meetings, from what I saw today, um, he is absolutely sharp as a tack. He's getting better with age as an investor. Uh, mentally, he's still all there. Uh, uh, you know, even better than ever, I think. Uh, so, so I would still r repeat, uh, even though three years have now elapsed and he's now 88, I would still repeat, I think there's an 80% chance that he's still uh, Berkshire CEO uh, five years from now. Um, you know, keep in mind, Charlie Munger's still, you know, physically, <laughs> exactly. he's seven years older than Buffett. He's slowing down <laughs> physically. But mentally, I was at a daily journal meeting in mid-February in Los Angeles. Um, he's still sharp as a tack. Uh, and so, so I think uh, Berkshire shareholders don't have to worry about what Berkshire will be like post-Buffett for at least another five years.